This is Jennifer with iCadenza, and I'm here with Avi Avital, who's an amazing mandolin player from Israel originally, who now lives in Germany. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you very much for inviting me. So tell me, how did you start with music in your life, and how did you discover the mandolin? Well, it was, my mother likes to, to tell the story that I, well, since when I was a, a very little kid, I had this collection of musical instruments. I can remember some of them, but I guess I always uh, uh, connected with, uh, with music and musical instruments. Uh, the mandolin came um, when I was eight years old. And I, um, you know, was this, I, 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 before that I learned a little bit to, to play the, the keyboard, just as an kind of after school activity. And and then uh, my mother and my father, my family, um, and we, we, you know, decided to go to a conservatory and we spoke about the different possibilities and different musical instruments. And somehow the mandolin really caught me and I knew it from the neighborhood. And there is a there's a big mandolin orchestra in my hometown, Beersheba in Israel. Uh, so it was like I was familiar with a with an instrument, and I decided to go to go for the mandolin. Amazing. Now the mandolin, it's really known for the Baroque repertoire on that instrument, but you've really brought it into contemporary music as well. In fact, you were just nominated for a Grammy. Yes. Under Darman's Concerto. So. Tell me about the different repertoire you choose. So this was the past in the past ten years, I think, uh, from the moment I, I finished the music academy in Jerusalem, um, and it's still a process, and I, I hope it's a process that will never end. Uh, I'm talking about the process of finding one's uh, um, artistic identity um, as a as a as a instrumentalist, as a soloist, and. So the problem with the mandolin, it's not a problem actually, it's a big advantage, is that there is not really um, a path like like with a violin or, or the piano. It was, from one hand, a very popular instrument in the Baroque area, especially in, in, in Europe, in Italy, where it, where it really uh, flourished uh, during the Baroque uh, area. But then after the Baroque, like other instruments, like the harpsichord and the viola da gamba, and, um, and other Baroque um, instruments is kind of disappeared or went to or got like different directions more for the popular music for the Italian folk music like the tarantella and the and the Neapolitan music um, and so nothing really happened with it in the classical field from the Baroque or the classical um, period till like modern times. Um, I'm saying it with, with caution because there were some, you know, it was always there, but obviously not as uh, not as popular and not as um, no uh, like uh, like other instruments like all the strings and piano, of course. Um, so when I started to when I started to play the mandolin, actually we didn't really have a mandolin teacher in nor in Beersheba, neither neither in Beersheba nor in a, in a music academy in Jerusalem. So. So we went to a violin teacher. The violin is tuned like a mandolin. So, um, so what this teacher did with us is just teaching us the music, teaching us the uh, repertoire for for violin on a mandolin, and and then you know graduated from the uh, music, uh, the Jerusalem Music Academy, and went to Italy for uh, my master's, so like post graduation um, degree, and then. People, you know, the teacher who is a mandolin teacher, one of the famous mandolin, Baroque um, uh, mandolin players, Ugo Orlandi, said to me, why, why do you play, this is so strange, you know, to play, you play a mandolin, why do you play uh, violin music? And I told him, because I don't know any mandolin music. And so we started, you know, in the three years I, I, I studied with him, uh, we explored I explored the whole um, original repertoire for the mandolin from the Baroque and the classical area. But still it was limited for me. It was like, okay, now I play arrangements of violin music on a mandolin, okay? And I play original, whatever is written for originally for mandolin. It's also beautiful, but I wanted to take it a step forward to, to make a redefinition of the mandolin. Uh, so, sort of combining these two these two 
things, taking the the real essence of the mandolin, like is presented through the original works, and but taking consideration also the technical development of it, um, and throughout the you know the centuries, and I decided that the best way to do so is by um, actually commissioning new pieces from composers that I consider uh, like top composers that uh, that I could you know access and commission from mm -hmm. like of Nerdoman and literally said him I redefine the mandolin take everything you know about the mandolin and 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 compose for the the new the new mandolin and I have to say that uh, most of the composers especially of Nerdoman took it way beyond what I could have imagined and and did these wonderful pieces sometimes I, I played and I I didn't even know that the mandolin could could play such uh, sounds and and have such a, such things. So it's really um, uh, my my vision and and the main activity in there, like within my musical activities, to to find a way to expand the uh, the world of uh, of mandolin playing, classical mandolin playing, and really to you know to to break any boundaries and any. Um, limits of its repertoire and um, bring it back to the classical mainstream venues and uh, as a soloist instrument like er any other instrument. And it seems like you've been very successful at that. I mean, your reputation <laughs> has really been that you are redefining this instrument. Thank you. Yeah, it's really amazing. So as you, as you mentioned, you studied in Italy for several years and you live in Germany now. How do you find that the different European cultures where there is this tradition of mandolin playing more than there was in terms of that repertoire in Israel, how has that defined your musicality? It was, I mean, the years I spent almost eight years in Italy and um, it, w it was very inspiring to, to move to Italy and to spend there all, all these years because it's a place where you know the culture is so is, is rooted so so deeply in the um, in in everyday life uh, and so everything is there is about aesthetics everything you walk on the street what you eat how you dress how you speak of the, of course the culture the visual art and the, it's deeply d there it's all all over the place uh, uh, obsessed with beauty and and aesthetics and and art and um you know it's something that that as an artist uh, inspires you a lot and you get you get a lot a lot of it of course i, I would recommend every mm -hmm. artist to spend a year in italy um and then uh, and then i moved to berlin which is a uh, very different from italy because it's a kind of old but new uh, kind of uh, approach to to culture uh, berlin is where all the new art is happening right now it's like there is a lot of space uh, for creativity in berlin um you see just by walking on the street like every every blank um a wall in the streets of berlin becomes a space to to creativity um, um whether it's like graffiti but really like art graffiti you know just like i love you simone uh, uh, and uh, and just Tons of galleries and and beautiful art. Uh, so this place, Berlin, is a is a. Well, if I can say that Italy is beautiful, I I could say that Berlin is interesting. You know, it's slightly different, and it inspires me because it has space for what uh, what I'm trying to do with the mandolin. So take take the mandolin and bring it to a new um, a new kind of uh, definition. So. Uh, and it's it has been responding very well. I'm I'm there for two years now, and I'm enjoying every every day I'm there. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. I wanted to ask you also, as you redefine this instrument uh, over the last several years, have there been been any surprising discoveries that you've made about how it responds to new music or just what that process is like? So many, I, I like when I commission from composers, I like to give them a free hand and 
kind of ask them what is the mandolin uh, uh, for represents for them and it's always surprising to discover how uh, different uh, people have different ideas or different associations for the mandolin uh, whether it's uh, uh, bluegrass uh, so i learned that that in the united states it is mostly known for bluegrass music and i got obviously uh, the chance to to know and to um, to discover this beautiful music and, and mandolin uh, playing. Um, and for others, for composers in Europe, it's a different thing. It's, of course, like the Italian thing, or many of the composers says, oh, my grandfather or my grandmother played the mandolin here and that, and so they, it reminds them uh, of, of different things. So it's really it's an instrument that um, combines many many associations and and different pictures and that's also the beauty about it so i believe that everyone can somehow connect to it in different ways mm -hmm. and let's talk about your recording of abner dorman's concerto which was nominated for a grammy what was that whole experience like did you did you when you were recording it did you know that it would sort of sail that high in terms of its reach when we recorded it, we had no idea even if, if there, there will be any label that, that will take it. It was, uh, I, I commissioned a piece from Avne Dorman in, back in 2006. We performed it in Italy and in New York. And that there was this opportunity to collaborate with Metropolis Ensemble and conductor Andrew Sear and for creating a CD of a recording with all um, uh, of nurse um, chamber concertos at the time so we had four and we all thought it's a good opportunity to to record it and we didn't know um, we didn't know what will happen with it and if everyone if anyone will will be interesting on um, um, releasing it or buying it or we just knew that this music is amazing and the ensemble is amazing and and Avner Dorman is just one of the best composers, the best young composers uh, um, living now in, in, in the U.S. So, um, so we just did it without really knowing and uh, what will happen. And uh, I remember also everyone was very much um, dedicated to, to this project because of that, because everyone believes in it uh, so much. We, we, uh, we re seriously, I didn't imagine that we'll get a Grammy nomination for it, but I think, uh, of course, I think the whole, the whole CD just deser deserves it because it was so, it's just so good and everyone was there uh, with fully um, dedicated and devoted for, for this project that just the result, you can hear it, it's just couldn't have been done uh, better. So, and it's hard to say it because when, when artists record, including myself, you know, when I record the day after I record, I already think, oh, you know, this is irrelevant for me. I, I would play it differently now. Uh, so it's really, it's, in a way, it's a not, not a very natural way for a, for, um, a musician to, to record, to say this interpretation, you know, will last forever. Uh, but I have a different feeling with this recording. I feel that that this uh, recording of uh, of Avner Dorman's mandolin concerto is just I like it the way it is. I'm really proud of it, and I'm I'm really happy and proud that it got this uh, amazing uh, recognition with a Grammy nomination. Yeah. Well, congratulations! It's a Thanks. huge accomplishment. Yes. <laughs> so, what's coming up next for you? What are your plans and also goals for the future of what you want to accomplish? So I'm, have, I'm working now on a, on a new CD, on a new album. Um, I just finished recording it uh, last week. <laughs> and so we're editing now. Uh, it's about uh, Bach, Bach's music. John Sebastian uh, Bach is a composer that we all, we all know is somewhere else. You know, we can't compare it to anyone of the, of the other composers. And, um, since I was a kid, I always played Bach and really connected to his music. So my dream was to to make a recording of, uh, like a summarize of all these years that I, I've been playing his music. And and the CD includes um, three mandolin, con uh, three concerti, obviously not originally written for the mandolin, but two of the harpsichord concerti, 
uh, in D minor, in F minor, and the violin concerto in A minor, and the Chacon for violin solo in D minor. I adapted ev all this um, mon monumental music to the, for mandolin and mandolin and orchestra, except for the Chacon. And so we recorded it in Berlin. And the interesting thing about it is that Bach's music is so absolute that it it just sounds um, good and sounds like Bach and the music just delivers in in almost every instrument, including the mandolin. So that was the idea that I had in mind when when choosing to record Bach. So I hope this uh, recording as well will will you know find its way in the world and be released uh, um, hopefully in the next month and uh, yeah reach to many people i'm sure it will i also wanted to ask you what outside of playing the mandolin in your life or other artistic activities what inspires you and what what do you bring to the music from other areas of your life wow so Practically everything, I mean, everything uh, human I bring in my music, I believe. So uh, anything uh, starting from like every day's ex little experience um, to, to um, art that I see and that I, that I observe like a, a good dance show or um, art or gallery, um, I feel that just I live 24 hours a day that like I always learn from everything and um, and everything that I experience in life comes to uh, to the music uh, at the end so nothing specific but in a way everything mm -hmm. you know is a uh, I live I live music all the from the moment I wake up to the mm -hmm. I want to close my eyes in the night. Mm. I think that really comes across in your performances and your uh -huh. recordings. So, well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you. We wish you all the best. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.